everyone. Welcome to the show. I have updates to share about Donald Trump's coup clown. So first, I before I dive into them, I want to share this news with Trump's coup clowns, if they happen to be watching. The Atlanta Journal-Constitution published this article. For those listening on the podcast, it says, another Fulton County inmate dies in custody. Better get to getting on those plea deals. I'm just saying. <laughs> and speaking of the Georgia Rico case, a state prosecutor named Pete Scandalakis, I think is how you pronounce it, he announced that he will be investigating the lieutenant governor for his alleged actions to try to help Trump overturn the election in 2020 or after 2020. So Burt Jones is the lieutenant governor who's going to be investigated. And prior to being elected as the lieutenant governor, he was a Georgia state senator. He was also one of Donald Trump's fake electors. In addition, he tried to convene a special legislative session to name Trump the winner of the election. Governor Brian Kemp and other lawmakers refused to help him with that effort, so that was the only thing that stopped him. But he also flew to D.C. on January 5th because he was trying to give Mike Pence, the vice president at the time, a letter which falsely stated that there were voting irregularities in Georgia. So he ended up not giving him that letter, but he planned on it. So he was all up in this. So District Attorney Fonnie Willis was initially investigating him, but then she was removed from the case because she held a fundraiser for his lieutenant governor opponent when he was running for office bad move. She has made some stupid mistakes like that, I will admit. Um, so I don't trust this Scandalakis guy, though, because he was supposed to assign someone to investigate this case a long time ago, like a year ago, I think it is, when, when Fonnie Willis was initially removed. He completely dragged his feet. So now he's assigned himself. We'll see. Um, next is news that Arizona Republican Congressmen Paul Gozar and Andy Biggs have been issued subpoenas to testify before the grand jury investigating Trump's attempted coup in that state. Politico spoke with two sources. These sources confirmed that, yes, they sent out these subpoenas. And one of these sources shared a letter that Gozar had sent to the Speaker of the House on February 16th. So he sent a letter to Mike Johnson, the Speaker, giving him a heads up saying, hey, I got the subpoena. There is no reason at this point to believe that Gozar and Biggs are subjects or targets of this investigation, but both of them, as you know, are not squeaky clean. They are Trump minions. They both challenged Joe Biden's uh, victory. Gozar has been tied to Stop the Steal organizers, people like convicted felon Ali Alexander. Andy Biggs allegedly helped with the fake elector scheme in their state. You know, so again, not squeaky clean. And as I've mentioned before, the Arizona Attorney General is investigating the alleged attempted coup. And word is that she's getting close to making a decision or, I, I guess, asking the grand jury to make indictment recommendations. So she's going to want to get these two to testify as soon as possible. But the problem is members of Congress are afforded a lot of protection. There's something called the speech and debate clause you may be familiar with. It prevents lawmakers from having to share documents or communications if it's related to their work in Congress. So a lot of these jackasses, a lot of Trump's coup count clown jackasses have tried to claim, oh, my, my effort in trying to overturn the election or get to the bottom of this quote unquote fraud, that was part of my job as a congressperson. So we'll see if they willingly comply or if this turns into another uh, big legal battle. Next is news about America's defendant. Last week, I shared how Rudy Giuliani was whining about having to sell his condo to pay his debts, his Miami condo. Um, you know, he owes $148 million to Georgia election workers. He owes all kinds of money to people. So Giuliani claimed, couldn't sell my condo. You know, I can't do it because where would I do my podcast? 
His attorney wrote in a court filing, quote, if the court compels the sale of the Florida, Florida condominium, then the debtor will be forced to incur expenses for alternate housing. Surely the committee does not intend the debtor to join the ranks of the homeless. <laughs> I mean, first of all, I wouldn't care if Rudy Giuliani was homeless. You know, it would be fitting. It, it would be where he belongs. I also don't understand why he can't bunk up with his BFF Donald Trump, right? I mean, according to Rudy, Trump owes him $2 million for his legal work. He can't put Rudy up in Mar-a-Lago for a few years. Anyway, Giuliani's creditors told the court that he is burning through his cash faster than he's making it. They said since he filed for bankruptcy, so just in the past few months, he has spent at least $160,000 just on maintenance and fees and taxes for that Florida property. That is obscene. So unfortunately, the judge presiding over Giuliani's bankruptcy said he will allow him to remain in this condo, this $3.5 million condo for now, just for now, but he will revisit it and he gave Giuliani a warning. He said that if he continues to stonewall about his finances and his spending habits, not turning stuff over, the judge will use more, quote, draconian measures. And Giuliani is scheduled to be formally deposed on Monday in relation to this bankruptcy. So we'll see how that goes, if he can keep his story straight. Um, I will definitely let you know what happens. I also have a quick update to share about Ku Clown Tina Peters. She, as you may remember, she is the former Colorado County clerk. She has been hit with over 10 felony and misdemeanor charges because she's accused of helping to facilitate the illegal breach of voting equipment in Colorado. So if you've been following my updates, you know her trial has been delayed more times than I can count at this point. She recently fired her second legal team right before the trial was about to begin. So the judge said, okay, one final delay, but it is going to happen in July. He said, even if you have no attorney, even if you have a brand new attorney, this is happening in July. Well, the former CEO of Overstock, Patrick Burns, who you, you heard me mention him before, he was recently on a video on Rumble and he was, you know, which Rumble, just so you guys know, it's the rights version of YouTube. He admitted in this video to paying Tina Peters legal bills. He, as you, again, you might recall, he is a Trump sycophant as well. He took part in that batshit crazy meeting at the White House in mid-December of 2020. He also allegedly helped to fund the Maricopa County audit that was conducted by cyber ninjas, you know, the, the fraud it that proved that Joe Biden won again by even more votes. <laughs> so anyway, Burns said in this Rumble video, he paid Peter's previous attorney, the one that she just fired, $1 million, but he wasn't happy with the defense strategy. The attorney allegedly planned to call Tina Peters to testify. That was it. He had no other witnesses lined up, and he planned on having Peters place the onus on Trump attorney Kurt Olson. So the attorney wanted Peters to tell the jury she was following Olson's advice to access and copy this voting machine hard drive. But we all know why. We know why this was his tactic. It's because she has no other defense and all of her co-defendants have flipped on her. They're all cooperating with the prosecutor against her. But Mr. Overstock claims the attorney was paid off. Or he, you know, off, he was offered a federal judgeship is what he said. And he's like, oh, he can sue me if he wants for defamation. Uh, do it, please. <laughs> now, of course, he has zero evidence. So, you know, let's hope he does sue him um, along with Dominion Voting Systems. But in any case, July will be here very soon. Unless there is a MAGA ringer on the jury, Tina Peters is going to prison because the evidence is irrefutable. She has basically admitted that she's done it. She just is digging her heels in saying she didn't do anything wrong and, oh, there was election fraud and so I'm justified. No, 
not the way it works, even if there was election fraud, which there was not. And again, they did copy the hard drives. They did take this stuff. They took some of this stuff to a hotel to be picked apart and reviewed by their so-called experts, and they have found nothing. They have come forward with absolutely no evidence whatsoever. So if there was election fraud, where's the evidence, Peters? Where's the evidence, Patrick Burns? These people are just ridiculous. They are such clowns. So I will let you know when I hear more. Thank you all so much for watching and listening. Please like, share, and subscribe. Please donate if you can. Love you all. Take care. Talk with you soon.